Put on your sweats. No need to shave. Kick back and relax. Because it's Philosophy Friday with Matthew Weiss. Where we start off the weekend casual. Hey folks, Matthew Weiss here, WeissAdvice.com. In this video, I'm going to be giving you five tips and tricks that are going to immediately improve your mixes as soon as you hear them, as soon as you put them into effect, and you've probably never heard them before on any other channel. My whole idea is to get you into a mindset and a learning process that will get you very tangible results, not just give you little formulas. Formulas help, tips and tricks help, techniques help, but the idea has to be finding the emotional intention of the song and then using our techniques, our tips and our tricks to bring those out. So these are going to be process oriented tips and I guarantee you they are going to give you results. All right, number one, sing along with the song. Yeah, I know that sounds a little ridiculous, but if you sing along with the song, you are emulating what the end listener is doing. And so by getting into the song, by catching the vibe of the song, by singing along with it, you start to feel how the end listener will feel it. In reality, songs sell when people sing along with them. People do covers, people sing in the car, people sing in the shower. And so if you're singing along with the song, you're giving yourself the end listener experience and it's going to make your experience of the mix better and it's going to make the end listener's experience of hearing the record better. And here's number one, subpart B, Dance along with the song. For me, listening to music is a visceral experience before it is a mental experience. I hear music in my body before I hear it in my mind. So if I'm mixing a record and you start seeing me do this, that means the mix is coming together. I know that's also ridiculous, but dancing along with the song, feeling the groove of a song, is something that subconsciously we don't get to choose whether we like. You can mentally hear a record that you don't like, but physically, you might still like that record because the groove is good. It's not a choice. So we don't want to give the end listener a choice whether or not to like the song. So dancing along with the song helps to impart that end listener experience in another way. Number two, envision a music video. I like to put a song into a world. I think of what it would look like if it was adapted to film. Is there rain? What color is going on? Is there sunshine? Is there a romance? Is there action? Is there adventure? What does it look like? Because that's going to inspire me to do things with sound that I wouldn't normally do if I was just trying to do a paint by numbers mix. I'm going to start incorporating some sound design work. I'm going to start voicing things in maybe ways that I wouldn't typically balance something, but then starts to make sense for the emotional intention of the song, I find that giving myself a picture to work toward, a music video to complement, is going to give me the ideas and the creative juice in order to get the song not just sounding good, but also feeling the way it's meant to feel. Number three, change perspective. There is a really, really weird psychological thing that happens when we listen to something on repeat. Our brains start to acclimate. It's kind of like temperature in a room. After a while, if it's too cold, it stops feeling too cold. If it's too warm, it stops feeling too warm. But if we change perspective, suddenly we, we just reset and we get a more objective view of what we're actually listening to. And we could do this a number of ways. We can get up from our chair and walk around the room while we listen. We could actually leave the room and listen from another room. We could switch to headphones. I use um, Slate VSX. That's a great way to change perspective and hear what it would sound like in a car or sound like in a club. Uh, another really, really good way to change perspective is to invite somebody else into the room who hasn't heard the record and have them listen for the first time. This does a really weird mental thing where we immediately reset and it's like we had never heard the record before, we suddenly get the perspective of that person we brought into the room. And then on top of that, it also puts us into the mind frame of the end listener, which again is what we're really trying to aim at, giving the end listener the best experience. So by immediately throwing us into that perspective, we suddenly get a very clean, very objective listen to what we've already done. Number four, listen for boredom spots. Boredom spots are killers to records. This has been true throughout history, but now more true than ever. Listeners do not have attention spans. And so we are fighting. 
we are fighting for every moment that the listener is listening to our record. So I like to listen to a record and wait until I hear a moment where things feel like they lull, where I start to lose my attention and things wane. Because if that's happening in the real world, that's where the end listener goes to the next song. And we don't want them to do that. We want to make sure that we pull them back in. As soon as they might start to drift, we pull them back in. And so when we hear those boredom spots, when our attention starts to wane, we have to manufacture some kind of a one-time event or some kind of a voicing or automation that just brings the listener back in, grabs their attention, keeps them with the record, and keeps them listening until the end. Number five, approach a song with positivity. It, better yet, try to get into the mind frame of the emotional intention of the record, but certainly approach it as if it is a great song. It doesn't matter if the song is flawed, it doesn't matter if the song is bad. Look, how many times have you heard a hit record and thought to yourself, how on earth did that even get on the radio? How on earth did anybody put that on a playlist? It doesn't make any sense. Well, it's because the people who were making it believed in that record, and they put their soul into that record and their positivity into that record, and for the people who can appreciate that record, for whatever reason it may be, they gravitate toward that. So while we're working on a record, we have to switch our mind frames. Even if it's bad, even if it's poorly recorded, even if there's production flaws, we have to get out of the negative, get into the positive, and treat it like it is the most important record we have ever worked on, because you don't know. It actually might be. So if you approach a record with positivity, you are going to approach a record in a way where you bring out the best of it, not just try to cover up the worst. And that is going to make the record infinitely better than if you're just looking at it like it's a chore. All right, guys, I know that these are not the typical types of tips and tricks that you're used to seeing on the internet, but the reality is, is I cannot tell you a way to compress a record into success. I cannot tell you a way to EQ a record into a great mix. There's too many variables. But what I can do is give you a mindset where if you follow it, you are going to get better results and better results and more compelling results. And the imperfections of things start to go to the side because the compelling parts of the record start to come out. And that's what really, really matters. All right, guys, if you dig this video, Video, hit that like button if you want to catch more videos like this. Hit subscribe with the bell notification to get notified. And hey, let's continue this discussion in the comments section below. I want to hear from you. If you just want to drop in and say hi, it's great for the channel. Please do so. Lastly, you know what we say. We are musicians. Sound is our instrument. And I will catch you next time.